A pleasant good evening to you, Oystens. How are you? That is Liz's first inning since she has come back, and she's still in form. To tell you the truth, I, I don't want Santa to get vexed with me, but I kind of I I miss her from in the Senate. Not that I plan to go back in there. No. We are at the third stage of this campaign. It is the stage at which we start to unfold policy. It is the stage at which we start to tell you how we plan to solve some of the problems that these people have inflicted on you. How we plan to correct some of the savagery that has been inflicted on this country. And I want to say to you tonight that part of that which we have to continue to do is to make you completely aware of the things that we are trying to correct. Because it is the things, in seeing and understanding the things that we got to correct, that you understand why it is vitally important to keep the likes of Frando Stewart and Christopher Sinclair off of the hands of government. Can't take them no more. And as Rudy just said, part of the problem has been seen in not only the international business sector, but also the tourism sector. And, and friends, this is not difficult stuff, man. This is not difficult stuff. Chris Sinclair makes it seem difficult because Chris Sinclair is don't see. Let's understand that. But when you have had for 30 odd years an economy that was driven by two principal engines. One was the tourism sector, the second the international business sector. And those two engines fail. And then nothing else there to carry you, you start to go down. And you're going down sharply. And that is pretty much where we are tonight. And you need to understand how this thing happened. Because part of the legacy of the Democratic Labour Party, and part of the reason why we must not have them round this place humbugging us after the 21st of February, is that all they brought to you besides savage cuts and savage pain it's ineptitude and incompetence. And the fellow down in St. James Central is the crown prince of ineptitude. He alone, by the statements from his own chief executive officer of Invest Barbados, not from the Barbados Labour Party, not from Owen Arthur, not from Dale Marshall, not from any previous minister of international business, but the chief executive officer of Invest Barbados brought ranks with the government a, a year and a half ago to let you all know that the international business sector, under these people's misleadership, has, has seen 2,700 potential jobs lost and has lost 1 billion United States dollars in investment. Now, if we had 2,700 more people working in Barbados today, things would be a lot better. And if we had a billion with a B, US, invested in this country, things would have to be a lot better. But that man, that incompetent buffoon, has done nothing, has presided over the decimation of the sector, the only thing that he has to show for it is a $16,000 investment in his ministerial bathroom, which is a jacuzzi that has 16 jets. And I have asked repeatedly what it is, George Hudson, or who it is that you're going to drag in there when the day or night come, that you need all that big lot of water to spout and spray upon them. Or are you scrubbing down something or somebody in there? Uh, you, can't, you can't get an intelligent answer out of the man on the sector that he has presided over in any regard. Not only the chief executive officer, but also the director of international business made it abundantly clear. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a civil servant making her position clear that, look, Barbados was warned six times 
by the OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that we needed to put legislation in place in a speedy way so as to ensure that the international standards of our international business sector, the standards for transparency of doing business, were maintained. Not done. Six occasions, six warnings, each one not heeded. The result? That we have been negatively listed and treated as a jurisdiction with whom it is impossible to do clean business. So that Barbados' very reputation, and if you think this thing true, it ain't difficult stuff. If a lawyer has a bad reputation and is viewed as a thief, you will not do business with him. If a doctor has a bad reputation and is viewed as a quack, you will not do business with him. And it applies to countries as well. So that we have been handed a disservice by that clown. Then you have another fellow called Richard Seeley, who is one of the most empty-headed individuals on the planet. Went to Harrison College, but primarily entered the place through the back gate. And primarily, and he is a fellow who presided over the shutting down of a whole heap of tourism attractions in this country. Now, these are the things that we need to get back on the hands of the wheel. We've got to get our hands on the wheel to correct. People, 14, 14 past presidents of the BTA wrote to Frambo Short. 14 of them signed one letter saying that we urgently need to meet with you, man. And do you know that three or four months pass? And then the president of the BTA said, I'm stepping down from this. I done with that. I resign. I asked to meet this man. I put it in writing. Months went past. 14 or uh, 13 other past presidents signed the letter. Not a word with Frambo Stewart. And what did these good people want to say to the Prime Minister of Barbados? To tell him that there's need for urgent intervention. To help save whole heaps of tourism attractions that had been closing down. And you know it, Christchurch, you had the Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary. That done with. Up the hill there, you had Ocean Park. That done with. You used to see helicopters flying over Oysters Bay every day. Them done with. MV Harbor Master. That done with. A thing called Sea Spy. That done with. And in each case, we losing job after job. So that tonight, as a result of the incompetence of Richard Seeley and, and, and that clown we got for a prime minister, you have a situation where 16,000 people, our home, cannot pay the mortgage. 16,000 of you cannot tell your children tonight where the next meal is to come from. 16,000 of our fellow citizens cannot tell their children tonight how they're going to afford essential things like health care and so on. And now on top of that to add insult upon injury. Your Prime Minister says to you that that is not a legitimate concern of yours. Don't worry about where the money going to come from. Consult a blasted drug lord. In your Barbados and mine, these are the things that are being done to us. It is a slap in the face. And these are the things that we got to fix. This is what it has to be about. I, I, it is not to get tied up with Chris Tinkler and his foolishness, but it is, to bring, it is to bring this country to an understanding that the leadership offered by Frandall Short is misguided, disconnected from the people. He is adrift and asleep at the wheel, and it got to be rescued by a Barbados Labour Party with a competent political leader in one alpha. And the misdirection of Frandall Short is followed by, by a couple of the others in the Democratic Labour Party who are equally aimless and pretty, and, and pretty stupid on top of it as well. You have a girl like Irene Sandy for Garner who I don't trouble in the Senate because I don't believe that you should get yourself into a situation that could be equated to child abuse. So I leave out Irene. But she all of a sudden, 
apparently has nothing to contribute to the political debate in the country. So she feel it is necessary to go after me personally. Talking about how if she was my wife, which Lord God, I hope never happened. She would put poison in my tea. And I said to her, darling, if ever the day dawn, when I turn in the bed and butt on you as my wife, I would drink the tea. Believe that. But this has to be about solutions. We can't get sidetracked with them, so this has to be about solutions. And the manifesto that you would have gotten yesterday speaks to serious solutions and doing things that the Democratic Labour Party, Labour Party, hear me, the Democratic Labour Party told you it was impossible to do any better with respect to the cost of living. And, and, and yet, having failed at that which they said is job number one, job number two, and job number three, they turn around and tell you, vote for them again. But even as you're voting for them again, uh, we can't do nothing about your cost of living. But we consider that to be feces. Something can be done about it. And one of the exciting things that we intend to do, we, 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 can, we can where Chris Sinclair can't get because his head is like an empty apartment building. You go rent it or furnish. He, we gain where he can't reach. And, and we are saying to you that with respect to the cost of living, one of the principal things we have to deal with is something that you call the bond rates. Now let me explain to you what the bond rates are. Under the World Trade Organization Agreement, every single member state makes commitments that you're going to set your taxes at your border where you're importing goods at a certain level. That makes sense to you? And if you are a small developing country like Barbados, you tend to set the taxes high because of the fact that you wish to give some protection to your small industries which will be facing competition from developed countries. So that, for example, you set your taxes high on imported chicken because you want to protect local production. That makes sense to you? Right. Now, there are some areas where we got taxes as high as 120% of the value of the product, but we don't produce the product down here. So who are we protecting? What do we have the tax so high for? And if you think it true, if you move down the taxes, Chris Sinclair, buffoon that you are, bring down the taxes, you will then be in a position to make healthy food cheaper for the people of Barbados. And therefore, if you ain't producing oranges, and you ain't producing grapefruit, and you ain't producing apricots, and you ain't producing peaches, but you want to make sure that the people of the country could get access to them healthy things, you bring down the bond rate so that the people can access it at a cheaper price. That makes sense? And the same thing applies to oats, and it would apply to a whole range of other products. I mean, you mean, good Lord, proteins. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the proteins too. But, but I mean, you, you, you have a range of things that you're not producing here that you can make cheaper for the people here. But it's, uh, there's another issue. Another issue. The tourism sector. The tourism sector has food and beverage interests. And what you may consider to be a luxury, a luxury good very often is an essential input to a man who is running a restaurant, a man who will want to have certain wines, who will want to have certain types of expensive foods. But if you can't get it at a reasonable price because the rates are so high, then you are also hurting your hospitality industry. And this Labour Party is saying that we got to find a way to make tourism product and the hospitality and the food and beverage sector cheaper for the people who are coming here in order to source it. And that should make sense too. And uh, where we at it, let me help Sealy call. He, he a little slow. And Richard Sealy, there is a thing called an advanced patterns of tax that coming out of England. And they say that they will keep the tax on in England 
because they don't want the British people to travel all the way down here, they prefer spending money in England. But if you were to do like the Barbados Labour Party now commits itself to do, to bring down the tax, the VAT on a hotel room to 7.5%, then the loss that they make at the port, at the airport, at Heathrow and Gatwick, they can recuperate on it here because the room is a little cheaper. Made no sense having the VAT sky high in Barbados and the advanced passenger tax sky high in England. And the people say, my look, we might as well not go to Barbados. We land in Barbados, go through the entrance and we off to St. Vincent with the room cheaper. That's what was happening. We put in a stop to that by bringing down the VAT on the room rates. Does that make sense to you? And this is the approach that we are taking in order to transform some of the foolishness that has been happening in this country. Now, I am here in Oystens, and I want to talk, frankly, to the Oystens people. Because this town is built on a fishing industry. And you have been taken for a ride by a very ignorant human being called John Boyce, who, as a parliamentary representative, does not have a clue on how to help that fish market make a better living for the fishermen and the fish vendors in Oystens. But we gotta help John Boyce. And the first thing you gotta do to help him is to remove him because he's an overburdened man. He, to put John Boyce as a minister with our parliamentary representative with responsibilities that he has is to humbug John Boyce. Beyond him. Now, you need to know that when Billy and I left the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we had, we had completed an agreement with the European Union. Under that agreement with the European Union, ladies and gentlemen, there is a commitment to do two things. To give to you, the people in Oystens, developmental assistance to build out the trading capacity of your fish market. The second commitment is that the Europeans, Germany, France, England, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, you, you name them, they will consume as much fish from us as we can sell to them. Now, there ain't a shortage of ice boats out there, and there's no shortage of fishermen to work the ice boat. Where there is a shortage is there's a shortage in the Democratic Labour Party of understanding how you deal with a recession as it lands at your doorstep and how you manage the impact of the recession. And that's why we got to change them. So that with respect to the fish market, we first of all going to explore the, the development assistance that coming out of Europe. But beyond that, we want to make the fish market a place where it is now possible to do all the things that you need to do in order to sell fish to the continent in Europe, which is something that no fisherman in Barbados has been able to do before. Now, can you imagine the impact it would have economically on all of the fishermen who come in from Silver Sands, who come in from St. Christopher, who come in from an oyster? Who come in from Lake Day in Scarborough and up the hill in, in Tombury Village? Can you, Tombury Hill, can you imagine the economic impact that it would have if all of a sudden a whole new market of millions and millions of people was open up for them to sell fish to? But what humbugs them from doing that? Two things that a government, if it knew what it was doing, would have been able to correct ever since. One, a single piece of legislation about three lines long, saying that no longer will the chief medical officer be responsible for guaranteeing the standard of the protein that we export from the country, but instead it will be the chief veterinary officer. Would you believe that for the last five years, Labour Party, for the last five painful, worthless years, this government has failed to bring that simple piece of legislation which is all the Europeans require for us to be able to sell not only fish to Europe but also ice cream and any other product that has in meat or, or milk or some sort of protein base. 
deprived of economic opportunity, deprived of exporting opportunity, deprived of foreign exchange earning opportunity by a government that does not know where or what it is doing. Now, the second thing, you go going to fix the fish market. And I use the example of Dominica. And when Arthur and I were treated once to a walkthrough of a fish market, we were in, 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 in um, sorry, I shouldn't use Dominica, let me use St. Vincent, because that's where Owen was with me. And we went with Ralph Gonzalez through a fish market. It is a fish market within there like this here. No wooden benches and wooden tables. Stainless steel, if you please. And then you got the sinks made out of stainless steel and the pipes over and when you're cutting and you're scaling your bone and you wash down immediately. There is not a fly to be found because you go through two or three air conditioned doors to get to the room where you're doing the fish. And it is all kept at a certain minimum temperature. Do you understand the fundamental difference between that fish market in St. Vincent that has a pian, pian, little petty fishing industry and the one here in Oystens, which is the bedrock of fishing in Barbados. And we, with the biggest fishing fleet, have been hamstrung in terms of our development and the capacity to empower working class people in this, this constituency and across Christchurch by a government that does not have a vision for the future. Now, why on earth, under those circumstances, would you give them another five years, man? To do what with? And it, goes, it gets worse. This manifesto also commits us to taking another new course, a visionary course, down in St. James. Now I see a light flashing, and I ain't sure how much time they got for me. How much? Okay. He tell me I got seven minutes. So, I, I want you to understand what the plan is for down in St. James' side. Because it's important to you too, Cody, the people we're going to be bringing to the island coming out here on a Friday and Saturday night to spend the money. The University of the West Indies right now, ladies and gentlemen, has 78% 70 of its student role as being locals. 16% of the student role are people from this region. And the other 6 or so percent are students from overseas and outside the Caribbean, United States, Canada, etc. We are proposing that we will transform Cave Hill into a university town. How do you do that? Cave Hill currently houses a, a student population of 10,000 people. But without having to build out any more, without having to put on any more, any more uh, rooms to study and so on, and lecture theaters, Cave Hill can accommodate 15,000. If those five, extra 5,000 people come into Barbados every year for a program of study that may run three or five years, we're allowed now to come here, we would have a massive fillip of buoyancy in our economy. 5,000 people who have to come here and rent accommodation in my constituency and in Sandra Husband's constituency and in the constituency that will soon be Gregory Nichols' constituency when he waterline Chris Sickler on the 21st of February. You would have 5,000 people who got to go to the supermarket and buy goods. 5,000 who got to go to the barber or the cosmetologist to get the hair done. 5,000 people that got to go in a gym or somewhere else and pay to get some exercise. 5,000 people that got to use the taxi service to get about the island college students, they got no motor car. 5,000 people that have to come up here in oysters in order to buy little fish and get some recreation. That is the way in which you, without going in the NIS, compromising your future, compromising your children's future, which Chris Sinclair is hell-bent on doing, without troubling and humbugging the NIS arrangements, you can have 5,000 people every year more in this country earn, working, having a living 
interacting with the community, buying goods and services within the community to the benefit of you, the people who form the community. The Barbados Labour Party, in its manifesto, commits itself to going down that route. A better deal for you tomorrow. A better concept of development than that which you hear on the platform. Last two weeks, all of the vilification and the personal abuse and the, the cursing every night and Chris Sinclair describing a citizen's private parts and all kind of thing. That kind of nastiness gets us nowhere as a country because when it all said and done, the bankruptcy of the Democratic Labour Party is all that you have seen for it. And that's why tonight in West Terrace, they are reporting crowds as late as 9.30, 10 o'clock of only two or 3,000 people compared to the thousands upon thousands upon thousands that we had last night. And I want to say to you, therefore, that the time is now ripe upon us, that we have to turn our direction to the future. You have the manifesto, and if you don't have it, it online. Don't beat the body, don't keep the noise, but with the body for it, go on the computer and download it. It is a wonderful and transformational document that is a pathway to building the future of Barbados and taking us out of the mess that has been handed to us by an incompetent government. I am begging you, therefore, not only to read it, but to endorse it in Christchurch West and in Christchurch East, in Christchurch South and in Christchurch East Central, in each of the five Christchurch constituencies across St. Philip, all through St. Michael and St. James and across the country, ladies and gentlemen, return a Barbados Labour Party to office under the capable leadership of the most revered Prime Minister in the Eastern Caribbean. And give us a fighting chance for the future. Good night and God bless. Gary, Gary.